Hey guys, it's Marissa. I think we're live. Desi's getting this shirt on the craft social. And I'm starting to put out some um, files on the craft social, to sh some cut files to share with this. Um, I am so not technical. Somehow I managed to <laughs> figure out a cut file for my mug template. And um, really, it'll be the blind leading the blind, but I would be happy to help you um, try to get this file. Hey, Gina. This is what we're making today. And this is what we're making today because this is what I'm making today for um, craft fairs. Morning, Barbara. Thanks for sharing. All right, if you think your crafty friends would like to see this video, please share. Um, while we're waiting for everybody to get in here, I have to tell you that um, this happiness is a cup of cake shared with a friend is totally cased from somebody who totally cased somebody else. And I saw a picture um, I want to say it was Facebook because I feel like above the picture was somebody saying that they cased somebody and giving credit, but I can't find the inspiration anywhere anymore. It just kind of stuck with me, the picture. So I have no idea who the original happiness is a cup of cake shared with a friend. Um, whoever married those two sets, the coffee cafe and the birthday banners is brilliant. That somebody was not me. Um, once I saw those two things put together, then I just ran with the project in my own direction. And this is what I came up with, but I wanted to say that right away because this is just so brilliant, but I would have never, ever come up with putting those two things together. So that's it. All right. Let me show you how this works. If you saw my, um, stinking cute mug cake works the same way. You just pull the ribbon. And there's a chocolate lovers cake for one. It's these um, Duncan Hines microwave cakes. Desi, will you grab me the box so I can show? And I'll give you links to the wooden spoon sources and the cakes. You can do them on Amazon. These cakes are popping up everywhere, though. Like your local grocery store is probably starting to carry these dudes. Um, Walmart carries the chocolate lovers one. Um, somebody else responded to my stinking cute and said that they found carrot cake ones for, um, you know, the Easter season. So, but I'll give you some links to a few sources and spoons. I've got some printed ones that were really cute that I found on Amazon. So I'll give you sources for that. And the actual mug template, like a billion years ago, when I did craft fairs before my youngest child was born, he's 10 now. So this has got to be 10, 12 years ago. He's nine, so it's got to be 10, 12 years ago. I used to actually have a, like a tracer of this kind of mug profile, and I'd trace it with pencil and then cut it out and erase the pencil lines to do um, hot cocoa packets in a mug like this. Well, I went online and I found an SVG file and then modified it and made it so that I could get two out of a 12 by 12 paper, and I just sent them to my scan and cut. So I will share that file that I made with you. It's already in Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social. So if you're not a member over there, um, you should get over there and um, become a member over there. The file's there. And then for some reason, Facebook isn't letting me share my SVG. So I zipped it and put it on the blog. So you'll see that file come up. And um, the crazy part is, is I managed to to do this, to find this free file and then modify the file and then make it so that it cut two on one page. But if you, you couldn't practically pay me to do it again, I have no idea how I got through it, but I will share my actual files with you in case this interests you. And, um, the other thing is too, if you're, if you're having issues or you don't have a scan and cut, you can Google, um, mug card template, or things like that. There's bunches of free ones on the internet. So this is mine. And the files will be there for those of you who are technically inclined enough to use them. All right. So let's see. Um, share. And I'm going to go through some of the supplies here. So here's a little bit different color combination sample here. And my Stampin' Up! supplies to make 
this awesome mug cake include the birthday banners and we're going to use this stamp here eat all the cake we just want the cake part and then coffee cafe we're going to use this awesome happiness is a cup of coffee shared with a friend and i love this sentiment as, as it is but man did that become a multitasker um, substitute out the word cake i guess you could substitute out other things too maybe it's time to brainstorm that and then I've got my layering circles, framelits, dies. We're going to cut the largest um, scallop circle. I think this one's the largest one. It's the one that coordinates with the largest stitched circle. This is um, 2 and 7 eighths, I believe. And this is 2 and 5 eighths, I believe. I don't know. I will have the actual measurements on the printable project sheet. But it's the largest one and the one that coordinates. Morning, Joyce and Dolores. Hi, Dolores. All right, so that's layering circles, stitched shapes, framelits. Now, I also grabbed my corrugated embossing folder, and I love this idea that um, it's got kind of that like cup cozy. I know it's not a to go cup, it is a mug, but um, I think people just understand that intuitively and it works. And I chose a red and brown shades of brown palette color palette because it's chocolate cake that are in these i'm going to do a different color palette with some confetti cake i'll snap a picture if i get some but the color palette kind of came from the actual packets themselves um i don't know that that duncan hines box is and logo is red so that's where it came from and let's see here. So I'm going to corrugate my little cozy. You could do some designer series paper here too. I think that would be fun. Um, that's my next um, design. It's going to have some designer series paper here and go a little bit on the brighter side. But these are my chocolate ones and it's chocolate design. Hi, Carol. All right. So let's see here. What else? I've got my mug. I already cut this one out. Now you get two of these from a 12 by 12 sheet. So you can um, grab the file at kitchentablestamper.com later today. I'll put it in the, in the blog post. There will be a um, file for your brother scanning cut uh, creative software. And there will be an SVG, that uh, zipped SVG on the on the blog later. My goodness, I sound like I'm um, saying words that I don't even know the meaning of. I am not technology inclined. I don't know how I struggled through this one. Um, you know how? My middle child, Violet, she is um, 14, and she's how I struggle through the technology stuff. She totally helped me figure that out. Then for my little cup cozy, I've got a two by five and a quarter piece contrasting cardstock. We talked about my Whisper White largest stitched circle. And at this one, I've got a soft suede scallop circle. For this variation of the design, I grabbed my Stampin' Up! cotton um, ribbon. This is the 3 inch real red. I've got a wooden spoon, red and white striped. I'll give you some Amazon sources for the cakes and the spoons in case you're like me and you like to just click a button and have it delivered to your door. Stampin' pads are real red and early espresso. You'll need some um, clear tape and a water spritzer. And I think that's really about it. You know what else I need? A one eighth inch handheld circle punch or a crocodile, something that does those little holes. Hey, Sandra. All right. Um, let me get my Simply Scored here. Look at my Simply Scored is covered with all the other little mug cakes. Here's a white version with the crumb cake, like cozy. And let's take all these guys out of the way. Put this in here. And we're going to just score down the center of the mug. Too much stuff in the way today. Barbara says she doesn't have the corrugated 
fold over there is an old-fashioned way to do it. There sure is, isn't there? Remember those cranks? The, didn't Stampin' Up! have one of those corrugators where you crank it through? I still think my corrugator is in my garage. I have a couple of cabinets of stamping supplies. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking the point at the top of my mug, and I've got it in this um, six inch line and I just took a Sharpie and marked the six inch line. So when you don't have an exact measurement but you do have some points of reference, if you have one line marked, I pick six inches, on your Simply Score tool, you can score a straight line without having an exact measurement to score on because this one does not line up on an exact measurement. It actually lines up at probably what would be um, 16, 15, 14, probably four and 13 sixteenths. So what I do is I line it up on this six inch mark that's been um, highlighted with a Sharpie marker. And then I mark, or then I line up this point in that same track. And I know it's the same track because it's marked. Does that make sense? Clear as mud. And then I'm gonna just score down that with my Simply Score tool. Rie, how are you feeling? Barbara has the cranky corrugator. Oh, goodness. Sounds like me. Me and the cranky corrugator should spend the afternoon together. <laughs> All right. So we've done our scoring. And what I like to do is I like to fold my mug backwards. And I like to really make sure that I line this up nicely here. So you see I'm using the mug handle and making sure that I line this up nicely. You're gonna have to kind of push. And then I flip it around the right way so that if it gets a little, um, if the score line gets a little wide, if there's any cracking or stretching that happened on the inside of the mug, and then when I go ahead and smooth out this fold, everything lines up nicely and it's really crisp without all that um, stretching that might happen. Okay, so then I'm going to take tear and tape adhesive and run it this way along the inside of my mug and make a little pouch. Now you don't want to run it across the bottom and I'll show you why after, but just down one edge and then we'll close up our mug and let's set this all aside because I need my big shot for a minute. We're going to corrugate. Sometimes I think that this corrugated dynamic compressions folder is kind of cranky also. I think corrugating is just cranky. I don't know. Um, this particular folder can be really rough on your paper. So I'd like to suggest that whenever possible you run it through with the spine first. What happens is then the pressure that the machine is placing on the folder is relieved after every bump and it's more gentle on your paper. The other thing that I suggest for the use of this is that you spritz it. So I got a little water here and you don't want to get too crazy. I get a little damp. Um, you might need a little bit less and more humid times of the year, but this will make such a big difference in how your corrugated paper turns out. Lay it into the folder. Now for embossing with the 3D, with the dynamic ones, you're gonna just use the platform, the folder, and the top cutting pad. Carol says she always appreciates all my tips. Thank you so much for saying that, Carol. I'm not good at pointing out, like, this is the solution to all your problems and marketing my stuff that way. I'm not good at um, saying, let me teach you this. I don't think of it, I guess, so much that way. But when it's all said and done, I do feel like I, I, I do a lot of teaching as we go through the process. But I can't always pick out what it is that I'm actually teaching until I'm doing it. I take it for granted, I guess. Okay, so now we've got this beautiful corrugated piece without any um, stretching or tearing. I don't know if anybody is using that corrugated folder and having any trouble with it. But if you are... Um, you know what I'm talking about. It can be an issue. All right, now I've got my circle here. Let me grab my stamping pads and my um, 
ink pads, early espresso, and real red. Does it get me a stamp and pierce mat? All right, it's a good thing I got Desi because I still got one broken leg. <laughs> All right, so what we want to do here is prepare our happiness as stamp. I've got a piece of clear tape, and you want to take your paper snips. Thank you. You can leave it right there. And I'm going to cover the word coffee. And I really want to make sure I'm covering the full bottom edge and the full right edge. So I'm covering the entire C and below the word, but not shared. And then what I'll do is I'll take my paper snips and just snip right along the top of the word very carefully. Don't damage your stamp and leave a tail hanging off the side. So coffee is masked off now. And you can ink up the entire stamp with early espresso. Make sure that you get really good coverage on this one. Let me bring in my stamp and pierce mat here. You'll get better impressions from these photopolymer stamps with the stamp and pierce. And then when you've got really good coverage, this is the first ink without cleaning, so I want good coverage. You peel. And now this mask, because you've got this handle, you can use this mask again, which is really important if you're making a bunch of these. All right, so you go ahead and stamp it centered. Hi, Sandy. Carol says she's learned a lot from me. That's awesome. I need to hear that today. I'm having one of those. So happiness is a cuppa shared with a friend. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to drop that little mask right back over the word coffee. I'm gonna set it aside, careful for inky fingers, and now I'm ready to make the next impression. I can just go ink up again for the next one, okay? Now, um, for the cup of cake, I need just a little scrap of Whisper White. Let me put this guy aside. I wobbled my stamp a little bit. You guys don't see that, right? No big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and ink up just the word cake in real red. And again, this is the first inking. My stamps were perfectly clean, so I wanna make sure I get a really good, strong um, impression. So I'm gonna drop that on a little scrap of Whisper White and give those guys a second to dry. Clear away these ink pads before I do something like stick my hand in it. Oh, I still did it. I'm wearing pajama pants and just wiped the brown ink on my pajamas. Does anybody else do that? Stamp in their pajamas and wipe their fingertips on. <laughs> All right, clear that away. Inky fingers. Um, I've lost my little mug. Here it is. And let me bring a sample back in. For those of you just joining us, this is what we're making. I'm going to kind of do the reverse color palette, though. So for adhering the corrugated... If you've still got your um, fast fuse adhesive, that works pretty good with the corrugated. And if not, you might want to grab some tear and tape for this one because of the texture. If you're a brave soul who's good with liquid glue, liquid glue comes in pretty handy, makes a good bond between these textured surfaces. It's so simple, you guys. I'm... Um, um, Really honestly though, cranking out a bunch of them. They were very popular at my first two shows this year. So I've got my two bigger shows coming up in April and I'm very excited to make a few more of these because they did so well. All right, so that five and a quarter is just a little bit long and you want that with the corrugated because you're gonna lose um, length when you run it through that corrugated file. So go, um, Line up the edge on the handle side, and then you'll just flip and remove the excess on the opposite side of the cup. And that way you get a length that goes entirely edge to edge. All right, now, here's the part where things get fun. Um, 
Dolores says, what brand Scan & Cut you? I have a brother Scan & Cut too. I think I will be really honest. Here is my brutal honesty. Um, I am not good at it, but because of the craft fairs, I need it. So um, I don't do a whole lot with it. I am definitely not a professional Scan & Cut user. I prefer my dyes, but sometimes you just need that extra set of hands that the Scan & Cut can be. Or you need something like like these mugs. I used to, I'm not kidding you, my um, first run at craft fairs before my son was born, so 10, 12 years ago, I would actually take this mug template that I had and I would trace it on the cardstock or the designer series paper with pencil, cut it out, and then erase the pencil. It was crazy. But now I've got the, the scan and cut to do things like that and my daughter is like the one who operates that thing for me all right so i fussy cut my little cake word while we we're chatting and i'm going to add a couple of mini dimensionals behind tony just tuned in such a cute card what is in the card under the spoon ah i'll show you in just a second tony i'm excited to share that um we're doing little mug cakes i do these for the craft fairs um i do several craft fairs in the spring and in the fall and um, these little treats are really popular Barbara has an original scan and cut but doesn't know how to use an SVG file oh that's um, you you do need to either um, USB your computer to your scan and cut and I think the original one that's all you can do I don't think it has the um, wireless in the original so you'll have to get the file and then use a USB or a hard um, thumb drive to put the file on your machine all right so there's my little happiness is a cup of cake shared with the front oh I put my dimensionals away but I still need them I'm gonna adhere the whisper white to the soft suede and then hold there for just a second. And Tony, this is what's inside. So when you hold the bottom of the mug and pull the ribbon, it reveals a chocolate cake lovers, perfect for one, Duncan Hines mug cake. So let's get one of those out since we're almost to that step. Here's what they look like. They come in a box of four. I pick them up from Amazon along with my wooden spoons, but you'll start to see them you're start all over the stores nowadays. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is, since we've got it here, we're gonna take our mug cake, and you want like five, maybe six inches above, wrap down and around, and then that same length of ribbon in the back. I need a pair of ribbon scissors. My paper scissors are really dull. So there's your little ribbon pulley. Now you're going to take your mug and straight through the whole thing. I'm going to do a little 1 8 inch hole. Open the little packet that you made. Pull the ribbon up over the cake. Somebody just told me very cute. Thank you. Slide in. Now you can pull the mug cake down a little bit out the bottom. That'll give you some room to thread your ribbon through the holes. Now if you're looking for the files for the template, I'll have them on the blog later. If you're a member of the Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social, I shared the actual scan and cut files, but Facebook isn't allowing me to share the SVG. So the SVG will be on the blog later. And then what you want to do is pull this up so that the packet just sticks out the top. I might not have made my ribbons long enough. Hmm, I gotta adjust them a little bit at least. There. I think I can still manage it. I'm pretty good um, in tight spaces with ribbon. If you're not so good in tight spaces with ribbon, give yourself an extra couple inches. Now I'm going to add little mini dimensionals to my medallion here. Oh, Janie says very cute. Hey, Janie. 
Tony says, oh my gosh, that's cute. Love it. Thanks for sharing that brilliant idea. All right. I said, I said at the beginning too, so for anybody who's joining me, um, the design is mine, but I have no idea who the original genius is that combined Coffee Cafe with um, birthday banners to do this happiness is a cup of cake shared with a friend. Um, that is totally not me. I saw a picture somewhere. I want to say Facebook. Don't know where. Somebody shared how she had cased somebody else. And I lost the inspiration. So I can't say who the original genius is who combined those two stamp sets. So the rest of the project, I ran with it. It's me. But I got to give credit. I just wish I was a little more focused to know who to give credit to. All right. So I've just um, wrapped the ribbon to the front and secured. And I did the front ribbon over and under the back ribbon. I'm going to bring my spoon in. And we're just going to tie a pretty bow to secure the spoon. That way the spoon moves with the ribbon, but also serves as a decoration for the front of the cake. Now, let's see. I might have to go back and make a longer ribbon on this one. The bow is kind of kind of petite. But there it is. There's our happiness. Is a cup of cake shared with a friend. You guys have any questions about the project? Anything I can do for you? Let me know. I'm going to um, make some birthday or bright color ones with some confetti cake. And I think I might order some uh, carrot cake ones before the spring shows are over. Does even have me my ruler? I'm going to measure how long this ribbon is since I think we need longer. And then I'll put a measurement on the project sheet for about how long it really should be. I don't want you guys to use this much ribbon to find out it wasn't enough. All right, so we had about 17 inches. I think we're going to need closer to 24. So I'll put that in the project sheet. Usually I can wing it pretty good. Love it. Cute. Love this. Thank you, ladies. I think they we're all ladies. Janie, Carol, thank you. Barbara, thank you. All right, so we're going with 24 inches this time. Let's see how that one goes down. All right, I'm going to get together the project sheet. It's almost done in the blog post, so you'll be able to buzz over by kitchentablestamper.com later today and get all the resources, the SVG file, um, the scan and cut files, the sources for the cake and the printed wooden spoons. I found some wooden spoons with marshmallows printed on them. Cannot wait to get those with my next order. And let's do that again. This will be much better with the little bit longer ribbon. All right. If there's anything that I can do to help you with Stampin' Up! supplies, um, you can you can shop 24-7 at marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. If you've got questions about the project or about anything crafty, about classes in the Chicago area, if you're, Janie says, thanks for making a project sheet. My pleasure. Um, if you've got questions about classes in the Chicago area or projects or anything, email me, marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. Um, if you're not a member at the Craft Social already, buzz over to Facebook, um, to the Facebook group. You can find it right at the bottom of the Facebook business page. I'll link it up. And later today when the project sheet is ready, I'll post a picture with a link back to the blog so you can grab those project sheets and file resources. All right, you guys. I'm going to tie this up and go make about, I don't know, two dozen more. Reach out if you got any questions, if I can do anything for you. Have a great weekend, everybody. Craft on.